Welcome to the MLMSuccess.com podcast, the show designed to return the network marketing industry to its roots of personal growth, leadership development, and wisdom of the ages success principles. We share with you real success stories from real people that we hope will inspire and encourage you personally and help you progress forward in your business and your life. We believe if you build people, people will build the business. Now here is your host who has been called the number one mind in network marketing, the MLM Profit, Network Marketing Virtual Mentor, and a host of other names that we will not mention because this is a family show. Frankly, he's just a small town guy that figured out that the real product in network marketing is people. Dale Calvert. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dale Calvert. I'd like to welcome you to this session of the MLM Success Podcast. We're calling this session Network Marketing Lead Generation 5.0. This will be part one. It's a subject that I've never, ever discussed ever uh, until this week. It's the first time I'm really talking about it at some level. Again, I think this will be an ongoing series, probably not sequentially from a podcast standpoint, but I, I think throughout next year we'll probably be talking about Network Marketing Lead Generation 5.0 quite a bit. Uh, I hope all is well with you and yours. I'm going to share a couple of updates, just bits and pieces regarding what's going on with us this week. Uh, I think I mentioned last week we were going to have Don's family here for Thanksgiving. That was a fabulous time of uh, food and fellowship, and we've been eating leftovers all week, uh, and we can feel it. <laughs> But it, it was really good. Uh, we had about 40 people here, and it was just a, a great time. Uh, our e-commerce sales are absolutely booming. I mean, right after Thanksgiving, we got into a couple of Black Friday, Cyber Monday promotions for a couple of our businesses. Uh, we only were able to get those set up for two uh, in advance, which we were supposed to be doing that for five, but we did get the two done. Uh, I'm glad it wasn't any more than that because it's been it's been booming. Uh, even without the Black Friday, Cyber Monday, I think online sales this year, the increase around the world is going to be unbelievable when the final stats come out. Uh, then right after we did the podcast last week, I went ahead and pulled the trigger, invested in more Bitcoin at 18.5, which is much higher than I have invested in the past, but uh, as soon as I did, I saw it drop uh, to almost two thousand dollars. Got down to close to I think it was like eight uh, sixteen two maybe. Uh, but it's starting its way back up, and I never really uh, I, I wasn't sweating it because if you look at just the facts and get the emotions out of it, and you look at what's happening happening with Square. Uh, the payment system square and enabling people to buy Bitcoin and what PayPal's getting ready to do with Bitcoin. Uh, the, the, it's just all lined up. So I was okay. And again, if I think if it gets, breaks through the 20 K, uh, you know, the sky's the limit after that. And I just really believe that. So. I had a couple of you email it. Dale, why is Bitcoin dropped? Are you sweating it out? You know, that type of thing. And I appreciate your concern, but no, I'm fine. I mean, if it if it drops, you know, below 15, uh, I'll buy again. But my fear was that it's going to get to 20 and never come back. And if I'm going to, to uh, cost average my position, uh, even in a negative way, uh, what's better, Dale? And I made the decision. I need more. I need more crypto, more Bitcoin. Uh, Kentucky basketball season has started, so it's my favorite time of the year. It's what gets me through the winter, honestly. They actually play tonight. They play Kansas uh, late tonight on ESPN in the Champion Classic, so that's going to be good. Uh, they've had a couple games. They've already lost one, which is no big deal. I mean... Calipari's dealing with all new freshmen. Freshmen, uh, it takes a while to learn the systems. It takes a while to learn, 
you know, the way he wants them to play, but they are extremely athletic. Uh, they look phenomenal. It's one of the best looking teams I've seen in many years. Uh, so the upside potential of this team is just phenomenal. But they're going to have to learn the plays, learn the systems, understand how to how to perform as a college player and get the high school. Uh, it's all dependent upon me uh, out of their system and learn how to pass the ball and work together as a team. And I think it's it's going to be a fun fun year to watch Kentucky basketball and be a UK fan. Um, I've had a couple people ask me, "Am I going to make?" Uh, gift certificates available through network marketing support services over at MLM Help. And we're not going to do that this year, which is just a time factor. I've had a lot more people say, Dale, when are you, when's your program in your mind coming out? When is that? Cause you do that every year in December. When, when is that event going to start the program in your mind? And I don't have a date for that yet. It might even be early January. I'm not sure yet. I just, again, we've been going. 95 miles an hour, uh, literally uh, 16, 18 hours a day, Don and I both. So uh, if you've not signed up for, for over at programmingyourmind.com, you need to do that whenever we do make final decisions, and it could be quick. Like we might say, okay, we got an opening on this date. I'm going to announce it. And Don will say, well, Dale, you aren't giving people any time. It's only three days away. And I understand that. And I apologize in advance if that's the way it happens. But uh, that that's where we're at right now. So programmingyourmind.com if you've not signed up over there. And we're still giving away like a, a $97 training program that we did, limited edition. And we're giving that away free when you sign up over at programmingyourmind.com. So go check that out if you haven't already. And it, I will be doing it. I, I will be doing Programming Your Mind. I will be releasing it. I will not be doing MLMHelp.com gift certificates for for the holidays this year. Uh, lastly, I want to just give you guys an update and ask for your thoughts and prayers. I just found out this morning that my son-in-law... Uh, Andrew and my grandson Jude uh, both have been diagnosed with COVID. I uh, haven't talked to my daughter yet uh, to find out how severe it is, but they have both been diagnosed with COVID. So please keep them in your thoughts and prayers. So that's what's going on in my world. Uh, that's what's going on in my world. The title of this session is Network Marketing Lead Generation Five Point. Zero. Uh, you know, there's a real possibility that our APL Go team, I believe, and have never doubted, uh, is getting ready to go on a historical run over the next couple, three, four, five years. And honestly, I just wanted this, all this documented. Uh, so that was part of the reason for starting this. And talking about this 5.0 network marketing lead generation concept, but it's definitely time for network marketing lead generation as a whole to get to 5.0. And I'll talk about in future podcasts what I felt feel like 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, 4.0 was. Uh, we'll talk about that in a future podcast, but it's time for 5.0. Nothing that has probably been on my mind more, I know nothing's been on my mind more regarding network marketing than this whole 5.0 concept since we launched uh, APL Go. So if you guys will allow me to kind of dump my mind over the next few minutes, I think I can take take you kind of behind the curtain a little bit on the history of network marketing uh, network marketing lead generation, or I probably should say the lack of network marketing lead generation, and where I really believe that the future must go. And I'm just trying to really wrap my mind around right now where I am personally is, is wrap my mind around the time, energy, effort, expense, 
and distributor education it's going to take on my part to see network marketing lead generation 5.0 progress to where I believe it ultimately has to go. Um, So again, this is part one of what will probably be many sessions on this topic that in all likelihood I'll be talking about at different times throughout 2021. And honestly, for me personally, I have not come to a real solid decision or commitment yet that I am willing to devote the time, energy, effort, expense, and team education that I know it's going to take to make this whole thing a reality. Uh, This week, I received two separate emails from people uh, that were disturbing, and and I received one a couple months ago that was beyond disturbing. But these two people had both invested and lost thousands of dollars in programs that were supposed to allow them to make $2 for every dollar they invested on in online advertising in their network marketing business. And if you haven't seen these promotions, you will. It's kind of the new thing, I think, uh, even though they've been around for a long time. And as I was reading these emails, I was thinking, I only wish they had just talked to me first because while the idea of putting in a dollar and withdrawing two dollars or three dollars or four dollars is doable and has been made you know popular and and has been pop- very profitable for many online marketers it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the right move in today's network marketing environment or any network marketing environment because what we don't understand or don't think about is these marketers in most cases are selling high dollar courses. Uh, there's no indication, there's no track record or proof that the, 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 those systems will work with the network marketing business model. I mean, here's what you really need to understand. If you don't have the opportunity in your program, in your network marketing company, to make at least $500 on the front end, you have no chance in the world of making these type systems work. Most of the people that are promoting these type systems, again, they're marketing digitally delivered high dollar courses And basically, their cost of goods is zero because they're selling protons and neutrons. And I'm not saying that the courses and the information is not worth it. I'm not saying that at all. I am saying that there's a lot of blatant money games that have been built around Me Too uh, digital, digital products that aren't worth the protons and neutrons that they're written on. I mean, that's been going on for a long, long time. But uh, when I started emailing these two people and just communicating with them, you know, you know, they're telling me about their dilemma and asking for advice, you know, after the fact, uh, the maximum that one of these people could earn on the front end commissions was a hundred dollars. And then the le- there was a lady that I was also communicating with, and the maximum she could earn on the front end was $62.50. So they weren't even close to the $500 bottom line minimum that you must be able to earn on the front end to even give yourself a chance of making these type of systems work. Uh, And then a couple months ago, I received an email from a cousin who I never hardly talked to, and he'd never been involved in business or marketing, anything like that. He was a a manager in a company, you know, corporate America. Uh, And he had a similar experience. Uh, You know, he had this turnkey system of doing advertising and promotion. And anyway, he ended up losing about fifteen thousand dollars, fifteen thousand five hundred dollars in three months, and what is absolutely an obvious, obvious scam. 
And, you know, you've seen these programs. They'll bring you in free, and then they bump you up to 2000 and then the 5000 And with this one, after doing the research, he did the 2000 he did the 5000 and then he did the 8500 which put him at the fifteen five that he ended up losing just from the courses, not counting the money he spent on advertising. Uh, but this one, it, you know, after eight five, it went to fourteen five and then it went to twenty seven thousand five hundred. And honestly, it got me so upset that I took, you know, about 40 minutes and did some research and I wrote an article. Uh, it's over at True MLM Reviews. The company is, uh, what's the name of it? OPM Wealth. OPM Wealth. It's over at TrueMLMReviews.com if you care to check that out. Honestly, there's no value in even reading that article unless, you know, you're considering joining that. But my point being is that we're in a different world today from recruiting systems. And there's a lot of people that are promising uh, different methods that have worked with various niches, but it's hard to find one that has been proven to work with the network marketing business model. In fact, you know, the ones that claim to, I have major reservations about and, but we do, as an industry, have got to figure out how to get through more people quicker, faster, and easier. We've got to get through more people quicker, faster, and easier. So, you know, I, I see people and they're this turnkey system, blah, blah, blah. And again, you know, they, they bring people in and before you know it, they've invested thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars, hoping that the next, you know, the next money they put in the program is going to automatically just create an influx of return on their investment. And, you know, if there's anything I've learned in the entrepreneurial world over the years is you cannot throw money at a program and expect, oh, okay, well, I've put this much money in it, so therefore it entitles me to have success. And there's some people that I think really have that connection in their mind. That the more money I invest, the more entitled I am to success, and there's nothing further from the truth. That makes no sense, but there's people that really believe that. You know, I think about in my NSA days and this kid that that, that got involved in NSA, and, you know, those of you that, that were involved in that program or know about that program, I mean, I've talked about it. I started at the direct distributor level, which was $5,000, which took every – credit card I could I had left that they, to max out to even be able to start at that level but for me and for most people a lot of people they're willing to go to work I mean it made the most sense to maximize you know your your profits from day one so I, I came in at the direct distributor five thousand dollar level but there were people in that company that came in at twenty five thousand the sales coordinator level which I still don't know why they thought that made sense because you still have to have an organization and you still have to go to work. I mean, just because you have the title of sales coordinator uh, doesn't. And, and again, people could have got started in that company for, you know, thirty five dollars annual fee. And I think, you know, a couple of, of air, water air filtration systems and they're ready to go and they actually had a finance program where those could have been financed so there was no reason for me to start at five thousand other than the fact that it made the most business sense i believe for me and for most people that were going to work the program if you're not going to work the program it doesn't matter what your title says so some people are coming in at twenty five thousand some people are coming in at thirty five thousand so them and their spouse could be sales coordinators and then I met one guy who, young kid, had more money than he had since. He's the only person I ever knew that did this. But he joined at the key coordinator level, which was $125,000. It was the highest level, you, and nobody even knew you could join at that level. But, you know, he wanted to be a key coordinator because when all the events were held, uh, in different parts of, of the country, they had the key coordinators and the master coordinators come across the stage. And I, you, you may say, well, that sounds crazy, Dale. Did he crave recognition that bad? Yeah. And he had more money than he had since. He was second generation wealth, which, 
any anybody that's done any research knows that most second generation, most businesses that are successful and then end up going out of business are second generation. You know, he's, and again, Silver Spoon, you know the the scenario. And he invested 125000 And I just, I felt so sorry for this kid. It's like, why in the world are you doing that? You cannot throw money at a program. And if you do, it doesn't entitle you to any separate, any special treatment or, or any, any level of success. And especially in network marketing, as I've said a thousand times, 100% of zero is zero. You've got to build a team. You've got to build a team. You know, 100% of zero is zero. And you know what? 100% of zero is zero. So, you know, as I sit back and I look at the history and the evolution of network marketing, and especially as it relates to generating leads for your business, and I think to myself, you know, what, what does, what, what really needs to happen? What does need, what needs to happen in today's environment? So the average twenty seven percenter with above average desire can create a predictable, duplicating team of people and win this game of network marketing team building. Dale, what needs to happen? And I guess the key word in that last paragraph that I just spouted was predictable. A predictable, duplicating team of people. And I understand that very few people think like this, but it's the only way I know how to think. And again, I've talked about it in the last couple of weeks on this podcast. It's just the DNA. Uh, And it's the only way my DNA, thanks to my mama, will even allow me to think. It's just the way I'm made up. I can't think beyond that or anything other than that. And I understand most network marketing leaders, you know, especially the three percenters, just spend all their time trying to figure out how to keep their followers, not their future leaders, but their followers on auto ship one more month. I get that. And network marketing is a lot of things today, but predictable is probably – one of the last adjectives people would use to describe it. I think it's very unpredictable. And for me, you know, I have to know that if a person is willing to do their part with the understanding that most aren't, but if they are, if that rare 27 percenter is willing to do their part uh, and they launch their business and they take massive action as we teach, that after their initial launch, after the dust settles and they have a few distributors and they have uh, several customers, after their initial launch, then there there must be a sequential series of lead generation methods, a sequential series of lead generation methods uh, that they can master. And there must be message to marketplace funnels that they can use and tap into and implement that will help them get to the level of those five new team members slash customers a month, any combination of that, and win the game. That's, that's, that's how you win the game. That's how this game has always been won long term and how it always will be. One, long term. I've said 10,000 times, you've got to get your skill sets and mindsets to the point where you can consistently recruit five new customers slash team members a month if you want to control your destiny. So, you know, things in the world in general, in society, network marketing, uh, and business in general have been more than disruptive uh, and unpredictable, you know, in the last several months. Uh, than any of us listening to this podcast could have imagined, you know, even one year ago. I mean, one year ago, there was some disruption and unpredictability and so on and so forth around the world, but nothing like we've experienced, you know, over the last six months or so. 
So here's what I absolutely do know. If a person can develop their skill sets and mindsets to a level where they can recruit five to five, you know, I say three to five, we'll say five new team members slash customers a month, they absolutely can control, can control their financial destiny. It's very predictable. It's very predictable. Three to five people a month consistently, consistently month after month, you can control your financial upside in the network marketing business model, and it is very, very predictable. So here's another formula that you can take to the bank that I absolutely know to be true, and that is X number of people contacted equals reasons fulfilled. Y'all have heard me say that 10,000 times on this podcast and multiple trainings and webinars that we do. It's the law of averages. You've got a number. I don't know what your number is. You don't know what your number is, but we both know X number of people contacted equals reasons fulfilled. So if five people a month can control your destiny for sure and X number of people contacted equals reasons fulfilled, so the real question today in today's network marketing environment that must be answered uh, for all people and especially all the 27 percenters is how many contacts must be made on a weekly, daily, weekly, monthly basis by each person, by you, to create five new members slash customers a month. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? That's the question. You want to win five people a month. You can control your destiny. Period. End the story. You can. X number of people contacted equals reasons fulfilled. You do your five a month over a period of time. You will have an organization that you came here to build. It's not that difficult when you really start trying to break it down. It's not that difficult. So for me, it's not about how can I do it for myself. You know, in phase two, which I'm calling phase two after the initial launch, I mean, you know, it's not about, Dale, what do you do now? It's how can the 27 percenters who are willing to expand their comfort zone, which we lose most of them there, (laughs) and devote focused time to the business. And we lose another big chunk of them there. But that's, that's the only people that I'm really concerned about. Everything that I do, everything I teach, everything is focused right there. If somebody's willing to expand their comfort zone and work and be committed and devote the time and the focus that they need to build their business, then we have to, my responsibility is to make sure that we have the systems in place where they can get to that predictably, get to that three, five new people a month and control their financial future in this profession and get what they came here for and win the game. So some of you know, most of you probably, that when we decided to, you know, help help APL go launch in the United States and decided to, you know, we're going to build again. We're going to get serious. When that happened, you know, I knew exactly what I had to do to get my business launched. It's exactly what I've been teaching listeners of this podcast and people on our webinars uh, to do for 20 years. And, you know, the decision I had to make, which was a tough one, was to put everything possible that could be put on hold, put it on hold. And knowing that it was going to put me way behind the eight ball, you know, this time of the year, but put everything on hold that I could and focus really hard for 30 days and contact as many people as humanly possible uh, and sending them to third-party tools. I mean, there's not one person that I enrolled that I spent over five minutes on the phone with who hadn't already seen, you know, a couple of videos, a three-minute video and about a 30-minute video before I ever spent any time with them, which is critical and it's important 
It's important, and it's the way it should be. But, you know, we ended up getting our airplane off the ground is the terminology I use. We got off the runway and, you know, got things moving forward because like an airplane, launching a business takes all the energy in the beginning, and most people are not willing to spend that kind of energy. But I knew it had to be done. And, you know, because of that, we were recognized as being the number one recruiter in the world in August, the month that we launched. And we were also the number one recruiter in the world in September, which really shocked me because, you know, we're talking about an eight-year-old company in 30 countries that has over 252,000 distributors around the world. So what I have seen uh, over the last few months is every person who's taken this massive action, shut up, let the tools do the work approach with this company, and I mean really focusing and really going after it, you know, have received uh, the maximum results that their personal skill sets and mindsets at this point in time will allow. You know, and and when I say massive action, guys, I, I, I mean massive action. I mean massive action. So, you know, I get it. The last thing most network marketers want to do is expand the comfort zone. They don't want to expand their comfort zone. They want to join the social club. They don't want to expand their comfort zone. So the network marketing culture in general, it just is what it is. It is what it is. You know, my friend uh, Ron Henley says the biggest challenge for most network marketers is to erase all the crap they've been taught over the last 15 years. And that's so true. And uh, I guess – because we've let such a, a unbelievable industry uh, cater so much to mediocrity over the last 15, 20 years, it's really given me, as you all know, I mean, I have a disdain for the network marketing business model. And, you know, for people that just tell people what they want to hear uh, so they can sell them what they want to sell them. And all these, you know, people, you know, have the mentality, let's just all hold hands and sing Kumbaya and talk about the stone cold facts that we have. And those facts may be true. And nine out of ten times they are. But they have those facts, uh, those systems have not been successfully implemented in this profession widespread in over 20 years. So 90% of the people that join uh, network marketing never attempt to get through phase one or have a successful business launch. Uh, Go out, go after it, get it off the ground. 90%, they're never even taught that. They're just taught, make sure you're on your gurus, your uplines, uh, conference calls and every webinar and post on social media five times a day. And that's about the extent of the training for most people. The concept of massive action launch is never talked about. And so they never get into the launch mode. They just kind of hang out. And eventually over time, they just are part of the crowd, part of the social club. And, you know, over the years, you know, I have done and said everything I can Individually and on these podcasts and on webinars, uh, everything short of hiring a personal psychologist for some people <laughs> to help them understand this concept of getting their business launched. You know, some of you know we've we've done a training in the past called Fifty No's. How fast can you get fifty no's? And a no is someone that is senior play one and they're not open for more information. How fast can you have fifty people? tell you that not 50 people that you ask you know could you please possibly watch my video for me that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about people that you professionally contact you're excited you're fired up uh you got i got something you have to see it's three minutes when can you watch it i mean sense of urgency and get 50 no's as quick as possible uh and you know there's people that have been in this profession 
and I'm talking about getting 50 no's like, you know, I probably got my first 50 no. Well, I don't know. But, but 50 no's as quick as possible. That's how you're going to win this game. That's how you're going to get your business launched. And there's people who've been around five years and haven't got 50 no's. 50 people have seen their play one that have said, no, I don't, I'm not open for more information. It hasn't happened. And you're not going to build a business with those kind of numbers, that kind of activity. It's not going to happen. So if I'm talking to you and you're saying, dang, Dale, I've never really launched. I've never really gone after it. I've never really, you know, I've never really gotten 50 no's. I don't know if I've ever gotten 50 no's. Well, Dale, it didn't take me that long to get 50 no's. Then you're, then you got a business that's moving forward. But wherever you are, and if you're not there, if you've never launched, I, here's here's the best thing I can share with you this week. Think about relaunching your business in January. Just think about it. With the goal of getting 50 confirmed no's in the month of January. And I said confirmed no's. That means you know they've watched it, they've seen it, your play one, whatever it is, and they are not interested and they're not open for more information. Uh, some of you, if you'll if you'll just take that advice, uh, it will set you up in 2021. Just that advice. You don't need to listen to any more of this podcast. You don't listen need to listen to any podcast. All you need to think about and wrap your mind around is in January, I'm going to relaunch, and I'm getting my 50 no's in January. That's my only goal. And if you will do that, if you will do that, you will have more going on. And, and mark them down. I mean, track the no's. And you get 50 confirmed no's in 30 days, you're going to have more going on than you can possibly keep up with. And, again, I, I, I'm assuming that's because you have, you know, a, a, a real opportunity to offer people. Uh, I call it four stars, a four-star opportunity. You've got something that you at least have three stars. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, three stars, four stars, what's he saying? Uh, you can check out the uh, video. I went on and put it online. It was on YouTube, and people couldn't find it, and I could never remember the name of it. So I just put it on uh, on momsuccess.com, the actual domain, if you don't know what I'm talking about, or even if you do, and I know some of you are sending people to this webinar every week, so I just wanted to make it easier. It's momsuccess.com forward slash four, the numeral four, four stars, S-T-A-R-S, the numeral four, S-T-R-S, momsuccess.com forward slash four stars. So you got to get it launched. What's the next phase? The next phase for me is not the next phase for most of my team members. And it's just not. I mean, the best move for me right now is an individual that if I want to just focus on recruiting uh, is – Hire a VA, a virtual assistant, maybe a team, maybe a team of VAs who do outreach for me. And I understand can can get the numbers pretty quickly. You know, if this VA contacts a hundred pe- people a week or a day on LinkedIn, and this VA uh, does all my solo email promotions, and this person does all my safe list promotions. And this VA does this and, and this VA does that. And I have a, either one VA working full time or multiple VAs working on specific projects. And pretty soon I can get some ratios while I, while I know that, uh, X number of outreaches equals X number of appointments scheduled a week. And the appointments would only be, only be scheduled after they've gone through you know, at least a play one, play two. And if I was going to invest in VAs right now, I would probably add a few more steps to that before I ever get on the phone with them because my time is the most valuable asset that I have. And I don't want to spend time on, on the phone with someone who is not a great prospect and understands, you know, we don't operate a social club here. We're looking for business people that want to create financial independence and make a real huge impact 
uh, on themselves and their future generations of their family. I mean, I'm serious. So it would I would add a few more steps if I was going to go this route, but that's what I would do. And then I knew that for every appointment, X number of appointments scheduled every week, I would complete X number of phone t- phone time. And basically my phone conversation is what questions do we need to answer for you before we get you started uh, is the only thing I'm going to have to ask. And then I know from that there would be X number of people that would want to sponsor at the diamond level because it would make good sense for them. And then there would be X number of people that would sponsor at other levels in the compensation plan and some that would become customers, but I would get my numbers and my ratio. And then, you know, I know that I I could get to a point where, you know, it's going to take X number of front end commissions to cover all my VA fees. And, you know, the, 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 the front end profit would be, X, whatever that is. It's just all math. It's all numbers. So, I mean, that's the move I would make and probably the move that we're kind of, when it's all said and done, are moving in. But the process requires what what I'm calling customized messages to marketplace funnels. That's customized messages, outgoing messages to marketplace funnels or web 5.0, you know, and we need those type of system set up to really maximize the time and the results in today's network marketing environment. And, and what I mean by that, so let's say I have a VA that's contacting 100 people a week or a day on LinkedIn. And they're trying to send them to a play one. Well, we can use a standard, you know, generic play one, which is what everybody in the know that knows what they're doing. I mean, I, I'm shocked at how many companies and organizations have no play one, play two system set up for their distributors today. It blows my mind. It just, it blows my mind that that's not just common logical business practice. It blows my mind. And and I guess one of the reasons is because so many of the quote unquote leaders in this profession just had the gift of gab and go in the marketplace, blah, 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 blah. Sign here. Thank you for joining. Now get on my get on my webinar every week. Tell every high five I'll high five you, tell everybody how great you are, you tell everybody how great I am, and post these five messages every day on social media and we're gonna build you a business. You know, it's 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 not maybe that flip it, but man, it's close. It's close. So so anyway, it is what it is, Dale. It is what it is. But you know, this kind of process of creating customized message to marketplace funnels is is a, is new. It's not people aren't going to spend the time, energy, and effort to do that. But in my example with the VA that's promoting a hundred, uh, contacting a hundred people a day on LinkedIn, then when people do click to go find out more about whatever it is, then the first video would say, "Hey, LinkedIn friend, thank you for being here." And so you're connecting back to the market. Uh, the platform, uh, the vehicle in, in which the lead was first responded. First responded. Does that make sense? So you need multiples like this for virtually every lead generation method that you put in the marketplace. And it's just a little tweak, but that little tweak will increase your overall results. And when you take that that result and you compound it by – an organization of a thousand or two thousand or ten thousand or twenty five thousand or a hundred thousand distributors that knows what they're doing and they're well trained, uh, just making that message to marketplace funnel tweak can make a huge impact. And, and again, it's something that nobody's talking about, but I believe will be part of, you know, network marketing lead generation 5.0. It, it, it needs to be. So the challenge, uh, for most team members, uh, successful experience, 
you know, for our team members to be able to do this, I mean, the challenge is, is a lot don't have successful experience in the coal market. A lot never even, some never even launched in their warm market, as we've taught. They've never used the $5 letter that we've taught. And it's like, you know, any other mess, message to marketplace system that we introduce is not going to help. You know, it's just not. So my challenge is uh, when when you have some people on your team that have not done what you, what you've made available to this point and they decide to get in, you know, halfway down the road, it, they end up messing it up for everybody else. So, you know, they don't have the successful experience in the coal market. They don't have the knowledge or the investment capital to, you know, for VAs or – funnels or whatever else is required. So that's a challenge. So it's kind of a dilemma for for me personally. I mean, I'm willing to invest the time, energy, effort, expense and distributor ed- education. You know, do I really want to take on putting together these lead generation 5.0 marketing to message funnels? But if I, I believe that in today's world, it's a must. It's really a must. It's where everything will go. So, you know, the business person, Dale, says, you know, Dale, why are you having, having these conversations in your mind? You should, Man, you retired when you were 39 and you were done and you should have moved on then and had a clean break away from this crazy social club that they call a business, you should have broke away years ago when you had the chance. You don't even like the profession. I mean, your heart breaks for all the delusional people that can't get out of their own way and have nobody to even help them get out of their own way. Your stomach turns every time you hear a mainstream guru open their mouth. You just throw up in your mouth every time you see this. Dale, are you a glutton for punishment? I mean, my business mind, Dale, I have these conversations all the time. And then Dale, the human being, says, you know, Dale, come on, man. I mean, you owe it to the profession. Uh, Look how the profession's changed your life. You definitely owe it to your team. Look at the awesome people that you have on your team. Look at the progress they're making. I mean, you know, some of them are growing and progressing more than they even understand. I mean, you got a lot of good people, Dale. They're committed, loyal, dedicated, and they're progressing, and they're going to break out. There's a lot of people that you have on your team that are going to break out. And, you know, you owe it to them and yourself to spend the rest of your life trying to make a positive impact on the profession and the people in it. And anyway, who do you think you're fooling? Because the DNA you were born with and the path that you've walked to this point in your life, and we should probably say ran (laughs) to this point in your life, you're only fooling yourself, Dale, if you think you have any other choice than to focus on the profession and the people that have impacted your life. You don't have a choice. So so what I have to do is make a solid decision and eliminate business Dale's self-talk and any self-talk that doesn't empower the final decision. That this is what this is my lot. This is my this is what I'm doing. We're gonna do it. We're gonna get it done. I have the people to get it done. I, I will devote the time, effort, energy, money, everything that I need to get it done. And we will put together systems like they've never been put together before, as you did, Dale, with the chiropractor program and the truck driver program and the mompreneur program and in the past. I mean, I'm not talking about something that I haven't done in the past. I've done it in the past. But in the past, it was easy as putting together a Play One, which is just an audio cassette. So I could could say, okay, at the conference, 
we're going this time we're going to have only testimonies from chiropractors and i could you know we had so many chiropractors in our organization and we could have 20 or 30 walk across the stage and give their testimony while they joined this business and then all we had to do was record an intro and an outro and put those testimonies in the mi- middle design a direct mail letter for the chiropractors uh and and it didn't take a whole lot really to put together a real awesome program designed just to max to create the message to the marketplace for chiropractors. I mean, we did that with multiple niches back in the past, and I can do it again. It's just it's just different. It's just different because we've got to be able to create enough intros in the market, uh, enough messages going out to get enough people coming back in to validate the time, energy, effort, and expense it's going to take to put something together because it's not just an audio cassette. Does that make sense? Again, I kind of went off a little bit there, but I hope you kind of understand what I'm talking about. So for me, again, uh, I just have to make a solid decision, decide to eliminate all the self-talk that doesn't empower whatever that final decision is, as each of you do as it relates to your future, uh, your network marketing future, and building your network marketing team to eliminate all the distractions and get focused on that which will move your life and your business forward. I'm preaching to the choir, I guess. So, you know, I'm already implementing this uh, at some level. I mean... I've, I've tried to communicate to our team that there's a lot going on behind the scenes. And again, as you guys know, we've been through uh, the death of Don's dad and just some other things as as life happens, you know. I mean, I found out today my son-in-law and grandson have COVID. So, I mean, life happens, right? So we have to learn to just run when we can run. But a lot of times I'm running and people don't know I'm running because I it, it doesn't occur to me always to let them know that I'm running. <laughs> Which it should. I should be better. I should be more aware than that, but I'm just not. So, I mean, what we did, we handpicked uh, 20 team members who right now, as we speak, are testing uh, a web 5.0 system and marketing funnel message to the market uh, right now as we're speaking. And between now and December 15th, this group of 20 people and myself will have 20,000, which is really nothing, but have, it'll be a, enough to get us a basic understanding. They'll have 20,000 $100 bill drop cards uh, in the marketplace at different cities all over the United States. Uh, so that's happening as I'm recording this. And, you know, I realize some of you listeners don't know what a $100 bill drop card is. You can go over to cmgpromotions.com and you can figure that out. But I think it's the number one tool that all network marketers should be using because it requires no additional time. Now, we are intentionally on purpose uh, focusing on getting 20,000 in the market by the, by a certain date, but normally it's just something that you put, you know, five or 10 or 15 or 25 or 30 in your pocket every time you leave the door uh, or every time you walk out the door and you just get them in the marketplace. I mean, it's as you live life. But again, I'm not going to get too far down that road. And, you know, down the road, I'll probably get in the details on what we're doing and how we did it and the website we were using to match the message to the marketplace. And I'll probably share some of that down the road. But uh, at the time of this recording, the only people that know anything about this or have seen the 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 recapture funnel that we're using is 
uh, Network Marketing Leadership Development Academy members, and I share everything with them, and I shared that through an email in the last couple, three days. They know the website, but they're the only ones. And then the 20 people that are actually in the test program, team members, and, of course, those that find the $100 bills uh, and have went to the website, and we're already getting leads from that. Uh, but those are the people that – those are the only people that, that have seen this 5.0 message to marketplace funnel. And, again, it's going to be a while before we make any of these public. Uh, and there's really not a whole lot more I can say about it at this time. But, you know, I, I hope you guys listen to this podcast. I'm not trying to prevent anything. I'm just trying to validate it. <laughs> and I don't like to talk about things. Uh, there's a lot of things I do that people never hear about. And, you know, I like to talk about what I know and what I know works. So, uh, you know, there's people on our team that don't even know that this is even going on. I mean, the majority of people on our team don't even know we're doing this. So this is a test market project. It's being done, again, with a small test group of team members. And if you're, and I know some of you are listening right now, you're on our APL Go team, and you're thinking, well, Dale, this is the first time I'm hearing about this. Look, guys, it's not personal. It's not personal. Okay, I, I could only do it with a limited number of people. I, I wasn't going to do it with everybody. And, uh, you know, we spent some time, energy, effort, and money to get this implemented. And it, there'll be a time and place for everybody that, that qualifies to implement this if they choose to. So my plan this year uh, is to introduce and test out at least five more at least five more network marketing 5.0 lead generation systems with some of our team members and to do this throughout 2021. And, you know, there's a couple that we're we're working on formulating right now that we will probably make available to our entire team. And we'll introduce that on one of our weekly training webinars. But, you know, another thing that I know for sure is that if a person's not willing to launch their business in their warm market and local market with people that they know, if they're not willing to do that, then the cold market will spit them up and chew them out. And then they're going to be sending me emails about the thousands of dollars they invest in an online system and social media advertising that they've lost and want to know what they should be doing now. Um, again, guys, it's just the same thing over and over and over. It's just tweaked a little bit and changes a little bit. But the real product in network marketing is people. It always has been. It always will be. And there's people that are going to look for the foo-foo dust no matter what. And there's people that don't have enough belief to feel obligated to take their product and opportunity to those that they love the most. Did you hear what I just said? I'm not going to repeat it. I've said it a thousand times. But, man, people don't like to hear that. And, yeah, we all just want to be able to do promotions to people that we've never met. They'll never know me. I'll never know them. They, We want them to join. We want to make our, you know, $62.50 commission and and just by just sending out endless emails and making sixty two fifty every time. Okay, that's not real business. It's not the way this thing is going to work. It never has worked that way. It never will work that way. I'm not saying you can't make $62.50 every now and then, but you're never going to build a strong, duplicating organization of people. You're not going to. And, And again, what I do know is if you're not willing to launch and you're local and you're warm market, then the cold market will absolutely chew you up and spit you out. You, It will. And, and what I'm shocked by over the years, because there's been multiple systems like this, you know, I mean, we can go back to the days of never done a thing except teach people how to do that, which I've never done, and SIG if we wanted to. And, and multiple other self-proclaimed network marketing gurus and what I am shocked by is that they're 
self-awareness and understanding because many of these people are very talented, great communicators, but their self-awareness about their personal resolve, i.e. mindset, on their own path and what is provided appears to never even be a thought in their mind. They don't understand that if not for the struggles that you had in the beginning, you would have never developed the grit that it takes to create the success that you're having today. It's not the method. It's the grit. It's the mindset. And, you know, I still haven't figured out is it do they are they just so unaware they just don't care they just want to sell this fifteen hundred dollar course I'm not sure but you know I can go back to the days of pro step some of you might old enough to remember pro step it was one of the first you know lead they sold leads here's 200 network marketing leads are and everybody was was trying to communicate to newbies you know, here's 200 people that want to know about your business. And they they were selling leads. And it was a multi-level selling leads program. And, I mean, I had a program called Web Cash Leads. It was different because it was all designed around selling products, digital products, but selling products, creating cash flow, create enough cash flow to cover your leads. And then when you got those 200 leads, you know, you could, we had a whole email delivery system, a whole thing built into it. But I wasn't telling newbies, here's 200 leads, here's 200 leads a month. You're going to sponsor 10 people a month and you're going to be at the top of your comp plan in six months or a year, which was the stories that were being told in a lot of these lead programs. Again, um, pro step was one, but there were several others. And, and then, you know, you've just watched the same pattern. We can go back to my lead system pro are all the multiple blogging platforms that were affiliate programs and all the, the junk that people, that newbies were being told. If you want to be a network marketing professional, you must be perceived to be a network marketing professional and you must have your own blog. And newbies were invested hundreds of dollars and then ongoing fees month after month, you know, writing their their blog post every day. And they ended up with a bunch of billboards uh, as much good as a billboard sitting in the middle of the desert. And just the misinformation drives me crazy. So, again... There's no entitlement here. There's reasons pe- things work and move forward, and there's reason things don't. And if you're not willing to do what you need to do, then you shouldn't expect to have the success that you see other people having. Successful people are willing to do for a short period of time what most aren't so they can do for the rest of their life what most can't. I'm getting ready to wrap this up. Uh, but here's the point that I think is very important for leaders and all these gurus charging newbies big bucks for these online automated recruiting systems. Uh, there is a sequential skill set and mindset aspect of all this. If people are ever going to master lead generation and recruiting and these steps cannot be skipped. You know, and there's a lot of philosophies that are not mainstream, but they're very important, just like uh, the philosophy that it's important to get rid of the wrong prospect as it is to sponsor all of them. I mean, you know, I've said a thousand times it's more important to get rid of the wrong people than it is to keep the right people. And, and you know, there's a lot of philosophies that are so important that are far, far away from mainstream, who's trying to teach people how to close everybody that come, that that shows an interest, how to close people. The last thing I want to do is close somebody. 
I, I close them, they end up wasting my time and their time and everybody else's time. You're looking for the right people at the right time in their life. And that's just not taught today. I don't know if it's ever been taught, but it's the truth. And, you know, I want to build a team of people that are well trained, understand what they're doing. They got the right skill sets, the right mindsets. And, and when you're building an organization, you're only as strong as your weakest link. And a lot of people have a bunch of people that were closed in their program, closed on their team that hang out on their conference calls and, po- and post on social media three times a day. And that's all they're ever done, all they ever will do. And, and if a business minded person comes into that type of environment, they get it figured out pretty quick that there's, you know, what's really going on here. And th- and unfortunately, that's kind of what the industry, uh, the, the, the acceptance of mediocrity that the industry has just kind of fallen into. You know, when my NSA group walked in a room, and, and it was crazy to me, but those that were on that team know, we would walk into a regional in Indianapolis or Nashville or wherever the regional meeting was being held. And as soon as we walked in the, in the room, people started whispering. Shh, shh, shh. You could hear it. That's the Calvert group. That's the Calvert group. Look, that's the one. That's the housewife that made $16,000 last month. Look, there's the, that's the guy that was the electrician. He's an electrician and he made 200000 last year. That, you could hear all the chatter. Shh, shh, shh. Why? Because we did not accept mediocrity. We inspired greatness as a group, as an organization. And leaders who ignore sequential mindset development, they end up always catering to mediocrity instead of inspiring greatness. That's just the way it is, guys. It's the way it is. And it always comes down to leadership has two choices, inspire greatness or cater to mediocrity. You can enter a university, any college, any university in the world, and just because you have some transferable skills, you know, does not allow you to enter senior classes when you're a freshman. If you're a freshman, you take freshman classes just because people you're likable or whatever. Uh, and network marketing usually comes down to transferable skills, but it does not allow you to start at the top. There's levels of licensing in the real world. A real estate broker first starts as a real estate agent, and you can go on and on and on. But when we built New Image International, uh, it was about, I guess, four years in, and strong, strong, well-trained people Hundreds of people getting better, coming down the road, improving, mastering everything that it took to build successful teams. And we, we, we ended up uh, about four years in introducing one of the most successful, uh, home based business infomercials, uh, TV shows that has ever been launched. And it was planned and, multiple cities all over the United States and Canada uh, for almost two years. You know, and I wish I knew then what I know now, but the reason for the success of, of that infomercial, without question, without question, was the authenticity of the show. If you've never seen it, um, again, I, I made an easy link. It's mlmsuccess.com forward slash TV show because people have been asking me about it. I can't find it on YouTube. Dale, where's your... And again, I, I understand. I can't find anything on YouTube half the time that I'm looking for uh, for multiple reasons, but we're working on it. But anyway, you know, throughout that TV show, there's dozens of testimonies uh, and there's nobody that heard those testimonies. They knew they were from real people with real experiences and the idea that they were not telling the entire truth or were paid actors never entered a normal person's mind. The authenticity in that show attracted the right people 
and the people that we were looking for. And it was an unbelievable experience, really. I mean, uh, the host is named Robin Seymour, and he was actually one of the little rascals. He was a childhood star, been in TV, radio t- his whole life. He was one of the, the 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 little rascals with Spanky and Alfalfa and all them. Some of you old enough, you know what I'm talking about. And, you know, where we were at that time, I remember four years in, I mean, I had a very deep interest in infomercials because we were kind of comparing ourselves with Herbalife, the entire path with, with that company. And we were ahead of our Herbalife sales. And about four years in, I knew what the impact that the infomercial on USA Network had had on Herbalife. So I was really doing a lot of research and trying to – I mean, I was going to the library because this is before, you know, Google, okay? And I was really doing as much as I could. And I can remember picking up uh, one of the rag publications for Network Markers Home Business Magazine or something. And there was a full-page ad about this – Robin Seymour will produce an infomercial for your company, blah, blah, blah. And so I, I called it immediately because that was where I was trying to figure out. It's like, this is an answer to prayer, Dale. And it was like, wow. So I called him and we talked and we had a great conversation. And, you know, we, we got the details and ended up signing the contract. And uh, myself and the company owner flew out to California to Hollywood to start recording. And I brought a bunch of testimonies and a lot of other video uh, to them so they could take what we recorded out there plus all the stuff that I brought to them and put together a 30-minute infomercial for us. I mean, he's the expert, so we showed up, did all that. So it took forever, but we finally got back the first show and I can remember getting the VHS, and I popped it in. And all I can say is I don't remember in my life being so disappointed in what I was looking at. It was terrible. It was just absolutely terrible. Uh, so I called him immediately. I said, look, this is not going to work for us. Uh, I said, I'll be back out there, and I'll call you soon. And then I called our local video guy and set a time. And if any of you have seen that show, the uh, opening on the uh, at our house on the lake, the lake's in the background, the Dodge Vipers behind me, the opening, I, re- I did the opening, and then we went to a couple of our distributors' homes and uh, got uh, testimony from them sitting in their home. Uh, Bob Armstrong's at his uh, farm supply business in Indiana. We filmed that. We we spent two or three days filming locally. I got that footage, went back out to California. I spent three days in the studio with them and my the other footage plus what we had plus what they had done. And we spent three 12-hour days in, this, in the production studio uh, to put together that infomercial. And it, it became very well known. I mean, it was so crazy. It's like... If I I had people coming up to me in public, are you the guy on TV? You know, and it and it bothered me. I don't like that. I had, felt like I had no privacy, but it was widespread, and we had that thing just humming. And w- the way we set it up is if a person was a regional director or higher, which a regional was the next to the highest level in the company, so they were established leader in the company, a leader or a national director, they could call the ad guy in California and say, look, I'm in Indianapolis, Indiana, and I want to run a show. And he would fax them back. We have Fox Network at 2 a.m. on Sunday. We have uh, this network at 3 in the afternoon on Saturday. And he would give them the times and the prices. And then they could choose, okay, I want to run uh, this $500 show on Fox Network one o'clock in the morning or whatever, or four o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. And they could choose. He would buy the time and get the video to the TV station. And the distributor, the leader, and that's a key word, would pay the ad agency uh, 
he would, you know, cover it with the TV station. We're out of the loop. So our distributors could just call, hey, I'm looking for a TV show in uh, Lansing, Michigan. What do you have? And, well, we we got 2.30 in the afternoon Saturday on this date, and they would give you the, give them the times and the dates. And they could run, run the TV show. And then when people responded to the show, all the leads were, were through an 800 number. We had a call center set up that took the calls. And then the call center sent all the leads from Lansing, Michigan or whatever from that show to the home office. And then the home office would send out the information packets. The distributors were out of the loop on this. They didn't have to touch it. The home office sent out the information packets. And then the distributor that bought the show in Lansing, Michigan, were faxed all the leads. They would wait three days for the package to arrive, and then they would follow up, and they would say, hey, you sent, you requested our information package. Just call on. My name is, is John Doe. I'm the le- leader here in Lansing, Michigan. I just want to make sure you received the package. Yes, I did. Awesome. What are you doing Monday night, Dale? Well, I don't think I have nothing planned. And they would invite them to our local event. And we killed it. I mean, we absolutely killed it with that system. But we took the distributors out of it as far as depending upon them to mail the packages. We did it from the home office because the worst thing in the world, somebody was expecting to get 25 leads and they get 61, but they only have 25 packages put together ready to mail in the marketplace. I didn't want to run into all that. I want to make sure it got done to the very best of our ability and control as much as we could so everybody would have more success with the program. And that's what we did. That's what we did, and it was a fine-tuned machine, and it recruited a lot of great people that today are still involved in different network marketing companies and entrepreneurial endeavors who got their introduction to becoming an entrepreneur because of that infomercial. Uh, you know, I think M- Mike Patillo, who's the director of marketing for It Works, came into New Image through the infomercial. That's how he found out about it. You know, so people ask me all the time, Dale, how did y'all have so many meetings all over the country? I've heard y'all, yeah, y'all had over 200 meetings operating in all over the United States and Canada, and you had 50 that were averaging over 50 plus a piece. And, and Louisville, Kentucky, y'all averaged 400 people a week to your weekly meeting. Uh, uh, Lexington, Kentucky, over 200. How in the world did you do it? Well, the infomercial really was the gas on the fire, was the gas on the fire. But like everything, greed and ego can mess everything up. And ultimately, you know, we had one national director that was short, trying to shortcut the system. And he was collecting cash, $500 for newbies. Newbies just came in. But Dale, he's a dentist. He's a, he's a this, he's a that. And collecting money, running – buying the shows, running in those areas. He was getting the leads. We, it took us a while to figure out what he was doing. And then he was sending the leads and actually making a profit, but sending the leads to the new newbie. And the newbies didn't know what they were doing. And again, it took it a while for us to understand that. But y'all have heard me talk about the plumber. And there's things that I had to deal with with that guy that people will never know. But again... Everyone achieves more when people understand and they're not they're not greedy, egotistical, or ignorant. And when and greed, eg, eg, ego, and ignorance is something that's really hard to deal with. But I can tell you one thing I've learned, and that's not something that will ever happen to me again. I can promise you that. I can promise you that. But but my point being, when you have the right systems in place, and you got that well old machine. You can grow and you can grow and you can grow quickly if you have the right people, if you have the right people in the right place falling up uh, with the right leads. Right people, right place, right leads. It's an endless combination. Great leads, wrong people falling up is a recipe for disaster. To create success in the future, I believe Network Marketing 5.0 lead systems are going to be required. I also know that people cannot skip steps in their sequential mindset and skill set development. 
I just know that. And in the future, people on our team, uh, if they've not done their $45 launch letters and invited, you know, 10 of the most successful entrepreneurial-minded people they know to their play one, play two, uh, that we currently provide for all of our team members at no charge, and if they're not willing to do that basic launch, then they're not going to be given access or have very limited access to most of the 5.0 funnels and systems that we launch down the road. I mean, just because you're part of a particular team does not mean you're entitled to all the team systems, just like with the infomercial. I mean, it's a perfect example. I mean, tools not used properly or used by the wrong people distract and diminish results for everybody. So this is another thing that I really have to wrap my mind around because I understand the pushback that will be coming towards me down the road from my own team. I mean, I get that, uh, but it is what it is. And, you know, when we roll out these 5.0 systems, I just have to expect that as part of what's going to happen. Before uh, before I let you go, I have uh, I have a couple of things that I, I want to share with you. Number one, I need your help. If you know any consultant with network markers putting these type of funnels in place, a consultant that knows what they're doing, uh, have them contact me. They can just send an email to mlmsuccesspodcast at gmail.com. I mean, there's a good chance I've already checked them out and wasn't impressed or I would have already contacted them. But just in case, I mean, I am actively looking for the right consultant slash mentor uh, moving forward as we go into next year. And lastly, if anything I've said in this first session of Lead Generation Part 1 has made sense, then the question I hope you're asking yourself is what action should I be taking right now? Right now, what should you be doing? Those of you that are listening to this podcast say, Dale, I'm not part of your team. I'm not this. I'm not that. But what can I do? Well, I think just being aware of, of the way things are moving is is real important. I mean, obviously, I if you don't have a play one and play two, I mean, you can't wait another day for that. you got to figure that one out. And and that just tells me you're not part of the MLM Training Club. So go join MLMTrainingClub.com and so you can understand what we're talking about here just to give yourself a chance to really move forward, you know, in 2021 and, belong, and, and beyond. But I'm assuming most of you are, are – you, you you understand that it's in place. But I would ask you, how long have you been building your network marketing team? How long? And if your answer was at least a year, then I would ask you this. How many times have you heard over the last year, 10, 5 years, 12 years, how many times have you heard that the money is in the list? The money is in the list. And I asked a consulting client that last week, and he and he told me, he said, well, Dale, I've heard it at least 10 times a week every week for the past 14 years. At least 10 times a week every week for the past 14 years. And I would ask you guys, is there anything that is an accepted mainstream business practice that no successful marker can debate that's more obvious than this philosophy that the money is in the list, your, be in your email list. And, you know, I'm a contrarian, or people call me that. I don't think I am. I think I'm a very realist. Uh, but, you know, it, it, I agree with that philosophy, too. Absolutely, the money is in the list. And, again, my only thought, our comment on that would be to understand what the list represents. The list is not a list. The list is people. It's people that have dreams, goals, desires, 
hopes to make a better life for themselves, their family, the people around them. It's not just a list. It's people. It's And, and again, it, it depending upon your business, but in network marketing, it's people. It's people that want to do better, that want to move forward. You know, it, our list at Wildcat Gifts are people that bleed blue like I do. You know, they were many of them born, raised with basketball, University of Kentucky basketball is part of their culture. I mean, you go through central Kentucky and, you know, it's not, it's, I mean, 30, 40% of the people you see, they're wearing UK blue something. They're wearing a hat, a sweatshirt. They got a license plate on the front of their car. I mean, they're they're committed, loyal, the best fan base in the United States. That's what my Wildcat gifts list represents. And I could go through every business that we have. But every business, it all comes back to its people. It's people. And ultimately, your long-term income is in direct proportion to the value that you provide to the people, your list, the value you provide to the people that you serve. That's how you. That's how your long-term income is created. So, and again, I did a whole webinar on this. I found it, or a MO in minute. I found it. We're trying to make some adjustments on some of that stuff. Uh, there's a whole YouTube account, maybe two of them. I have no access to. But anyway, uh, I did a. I did a. And in my minute about this, you know, what, 11, 12 years ago. And the title of it was Email Marketing for Network Markers, Build an Email List and Make Money with It. And in that, I was talking about how to make money with your list, uh, even if people are not interested in your business. We'll find that link and we'll put it in the show notes. But to continue, how many people right now, those of you who've been around a while, how many people do you have on your email list? How many people do you have right now on your email list? How many of those people are in your general database? How many of them are in your Eagle file? And how many of them are current prospects that are in the evaluation process looking at your opportunity? Because I think you need to segment your list in network marketing. General list, Eagle file needs to be pulled out and separate. And then, of course, at any given time, you have people that are coming through your play one that are in the process. So I know some of you are probably thinking, well, Dale, I don't even have an email list. And my initial thought to you, how could you have missed that? How could you have missed that? And I'm not trying to be mean or rude or crude, but how could you have missed that? Because there's probably no philosophy in marketing that has been more propagated around the world than the money is in the list. I mean, this is marketing 101, 101 in today's world. And if you have a long-term career-minded vision of building a duplicating network marketing team, or any other entrepreneurial endeavor ever. This is where you have to start, and you got to start today. Today. Don't miss this. Uh, I wrote an article about this. We'll put it in the show notes as well. But I'm going to go on and give it to you because some of you need to get off here and go read this article like right now. It's over on our website at Online Auction U. It's onlineauctionu.com forward slash building dash and building and a n dash email dash list. Building an email list with dashes in the middle. Onlineauctionu.com forward slash building an an email list with dashes between each word. And, you know, if you're saying, that, well, Dale, I have an email list. I'm good. What do I need to be doing? My advice right now for you would be to say, to ask yourself, did you ever really launch your business? And if you're not where you want to be, even if you have launched in the past, it's time to relaunch your business. It's time to relaunch your business. Some of you guys listening, it's time for you to relaunch your business. 
And maybe not right now, but you need to be gearing yourself up, getting your mind right. And come January 1st, the start of next year, I'm relaunching. And some of you, the best thing that you can do, the best thing that you can do for 2021, uh, well, the best thing is make sure you're on the programmingyourmind.com website, honestly. But the second best thing from a marketing standpoint, from a marketing standpoint, is think about relaunching your business January 1 and setting the go. If you set this go, it'll change your it'll change your trajectory, setting the go of getting 50 confirmed no's from people that have seen your play one. And if you do that in January, you're going to have a fantastic 2021. Uh, I've got a whole webinar on this. Again, we'll, we'll put it in the show notes as well. It's on how to relaunch your business. So, again, I wanted to leave today, make sure I gave you some specific game plans you know where you're at. I don't know where you're at. I don't even know most of you. I've never met many of you that will be listening to this. Uh, but I would appreciate your feedback on this podcast because uh, I really believe that this whole concept of lead generation 5.0 is needed uh, really bad today, uh, like at a level that I had not even really realized until you know recently. And after the couple of emails I've got and the email from my cousin, it's like we gotta we gotta we gotta clean this up and we gotta take this whole thing to a different level. We gotta take it to a different level because X number of people contacted equals reasons fulfilled. And when those people are contacted and they respond, we need to uh, we need to match the message to the to the market in which they responded. Um, and I hope this has made sense. Again, this is the direction I'm moving in. Uh, I'm, and again, I'm honestly, I'm trying to convince myself uh, at some level, even though I know that this is it, that I've already convinced myself. I really don't have a choice again because of my DNA. But if if this was interesting to you or it made sense to you, I would really appreciate your feedback. This will be posted on YouTube as they all are, or you can post in the comments section uh, wherever you're listening to this podcast on Stitcher or wherever. iTunes, wherever. Feedback on this session will be greatly appreciated. I hope I made sense. I hope you got by you. This is Dale Calvert. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you next week on another session of MLMSuccess.com podcast. If you haven't gone over to iTunes yet and rated and left this podcast a review, what are you waiting for? At Calvert Marketing Group, we want to spend our time on the projects that we know are providing the most value for our clients and customers. You leaving us a review and feedback on iTunes is something that helps us more than you realize. And more importantly, it helps others like you find us. So if you've not taken the time to rate this podcast, Please go over to iTunes and do that for us now. It will only take a couple of minutes out of your busy schedule. Work harder on yourself than you do on your business, and we will be back next week with another inspiring success story, wisdom of the ages training, or answers to your questions.